Omarena koutou kato. Welcome to this ordinary meeting of the hearings panel. I will open with karakia. Tuia ke runga, tuia ke raro, tuia ke roto, tuia ke waho, tuia te here tangata, karongo te po, karongo te ao, haumie, huie, tai ki e. Good morning, everybody. Um, a little bit of housekeeping to start with. We've got a number of guests and public forum speakers with us today. So for your benefit, I'll just say that the toilets are out through the door where you came in from, should you need them, um, with the men's being through the further door to the left, um, to the right is to my office. So leave, we'll leave that alone. Um, this meeting is being live streamed. We're going to have a five minute break every hour. I just want to quickly cover uh, what is in the delegations register for this hearings panel today. Um, so we have a few limited powers. Uh, those are relating today to the parking and vehicle control by law and our power to make amendments to the schedules there, our powers to name things around the city, um, and our power to grant temporary road closures. Uh, we have no apologies. Both, all three of us are here. So I'll just confirm the order of business. And with that, we have a motion for a late item, um, which is that the hearing panel consider the item nine supplementary report, parking and vehicle control by law and its attachments at this meeting as a supplementary item, not on the agenda, pursuant to section 46A, 7A of the Local Government Official Information Meetings Act 1987 to enable a timely decision to be made. Do we have that resolution to go up or? Happy to move, I'm happy to second. I'll put that resolution. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Any opposed? All right, uh, any updates to the interest register? Any conflicts to declare? No, wonderful, which means we'll get started with public forums. So we've got a number of public forum speakers today. So we've had to reduce the time slightly, the three minutes, but we'll be making sure that we've got some time for questions as part of that as well. And so kicking us off first is Mary O'Brien um, via Zoom. Kia ora Mary, can you hear me? You're you're just on mute. Ah, uh, I think we're sorted, aren't we? Yes, we can hear you. Um, so whenever you're ready, and if you could just indicate which bus stop or which area um you'll be speaking oh. to, that's very helpful. Okay, certainly. Um, I'm Mary O'Brien. I'm the Access Coordinator for CCS Disability Action across the Southern Region. Um. So my um, submission is actually a general one about the whole process um, and around some key points and think actions that we think the council can take to really increase the participation on public bus use. Um, in the last couple of weeks, I've heard a few reports about the bus transport in Nelson on Radio New Zealand. And I hear that you've had an increase in your public transport patronage from around 1% to around 20. And I think everybody's to be congratulated around that. That's um, a really, really good step. The other thing that I notice is that you've, with the new routes, you've increased the um, number of people living in within a 10 minute walk from the bus stop. And that along with more frequent services and reduced fares, that will really make another good dent in, or add to the people that you want to um, use the bus. Um, and as we outlined in our submission <coughs> to increase bus patronage, the council really needs to make sure that buses can be used by everybody. Um, and a good gauge of who's using the buses and how they're going is can disabled people use the buses? Now, generally across New Zealand, um, a lot of people can't. Um, recent research um, conducted by Waka Kotahi about the transport experiences of disabled people um, reported that disabled people are most likely to forego a bus trip. Now, there's lots of things that are caused that. Availability is one, <coughs> cost is another and um, just the actual inconvenience or the energy to use. So if you, you may well live 10 minutes from the bus stop, but if you don't have um, an accessible footpath or you have to cross the road three or four times, you're just not going to do it. 
um, bearing in mind too that about a quarter of the population has a disability, this is a really good um, population group to help and target and they will benefit more. So what we have recommended in our written submission and what I want to reinforce today is that yeah, it's really good to get information about bus stops, but I also think, A, that you need to target the disabled community and find out which stops they can't use and why and which ones they would like to use. Um, bus stops that are particularly important are around hospitals, uh, where people go for social services, doctors' practices, those sorts of things. It's well known that um, disabled people have troubling access healthcare purely because of transport. And then along with that, we think that you should conduct street accessibility audits along the bus routes and targeting those key routes first, for example, CBDs, shopping areas, rest homes, those sorts of things. Um, increasing bus patronage by um, making it more accessible most certainly will contribute to reduce emissions. Um, I note that a lot of your admissions in Nelson come from public from private transport. I can't recall the figure right now. Um, so I think that is a really important thing to do. We really help, like to work with the council around this, around consulting with disabled people. That's one of our um, areas of expertise. Plus, we also have a partnership with a sustainable um, transport consultancy, Emma Cagney, to give councils advice around increasing accessibility. Um, I know that that's that you're a bit short of time there. My key, my key points really are, it's really impressive what you've done. You've got the opportunity to make some really good changes and to really build on the um, accessibility will increase the patronage by disabled people and older people. And you can do that by consulting with them and plus doing accessible street audits. And some of these things, obviously, you can't fix everything at once, but over time. Thank so you, Mary. Thank you. We'll have time for one question, if there is any from Councillor Sanson. Um, kia ora, Mary. Thanks very much for that. Councillor Rachel Sanson here, that was really interesting. Thanks. Um, so, so mine's maybe a question for... Um, Officers, if I can. No, okay. Um, so, so Mary, maybe a question for you then is: um, I'm just curious as to, to know whether you um, had any engagement in terms of accessibility for this process, the you know the public transport rollout. Um, I just need to clarify that I'm based in Dunedin, but oh, sure, okay, so that that no. I, okay, I can't no. categorically yeah. state that. Um, that's fine. I, 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 yeah. I wouldn't have but, expected you to need it. Thanks. Yeah, no, that's okay. But I do yeah. cover the South Island and we do have a strong branch in Nelson. We've just had a bit of sickness going on since the consultation went out. So I haven't um, pursued that, but not that I'm aware of. But we really help to work with the council around that. And given that it's a long term process, and as I said, you don't have to fix everything at once. Thank you. Nothing specific, but we did get a really good lot of information. Thank you very much, Mary, for that submission um, and for zooming in all the way from Dunedin. We really appreciate it. <laughs> Thank you. Yes, it's the wonders of modern technology. I hope you'll have a good day, and I'm really looking forward to seeing how this progresses. Yeah. All right, next up oh. on Public Forum, in person, we've got Kay Price. <laughs> Good morning, Kay. Um, when you're ready, you can just push the on-off button on that microphone there and take it away. Thank you. Thank you to the Chairman and Committee. Um, um, I, I come before you um, as a user, one who's been a user all my life, and primarily because or because of um, disability. Um, I'm now getting becoming older, and I'm actually a use. Um, I my dis my disability has become even worse. Um, so 
to be able to get to a bus stop is, in a timely manner is very important. And to get up on the bus, it's particularly if I've got a walking frame, um, and I have been increasingly finding that really difficult to get onto the buses. I find that the actual time to get from Nelson to Richmond, it's not enough time. And there's, it's really difficult, particularly for the drivers. Um, I've come to actually speak mainly about the costs and the structures and the routes. Um, the costs in terms of what I've found is 48 million um, to the contractor for nine years. I question what is the other costs and who is going to pay that? And is it fair between the Nelson and Richmond um, councils? What are the other costs on the budget for changing all the um, for, um, changes to the structure of the roads, which seem to be unknown or not determined? In terms of the structures, it's finding ways to actually establish suitable roads that the buses, these large buses, can go around. The actual determination of the actual hubs, as far as I can find, um, has not been determined. And yeah, and I find that the launch, and, um, these things have not been determined in one month, and as far as I can see, will not be. Um, the routes that I've found on online um, are not clear. The diagram is not clear. Nothing is finalised. I think the this I cannot see um, the customers have been really the users of the buses have not been taken into um, account. The actual drivers um, have they been approached? Have they put input? Is the maintenance all clearly stated? Has that been worked through? And I would just say that the whole picture has not been really put together. The whole structure has not been put together. And the aim seems to be for this council to launch it on the 1st of August, despite everything else. Thank you, Ruti, and thank you, Jim. Thank you, Kate. Um, unfortunately, uh, the things like costs and routes aren't within the remit of this panel today. Um, but we'll happily follow up with answers to those questions raised um, Thank you. via email. Thank, Thank you very much. Uh, next up, we have Dana Hanson. Good morning. Thanks for coming in. Over yeah. to you. Thank you. Um, I live on Jenner Road, so that's what we're discussing today. Are you all familiar with Jenner Road? Have you driven down it? Quite a narrow street. I think um, I've lived there for six years, and over that time, we now have a dog. We have a baby. We've never had on-street parking, so we always park nearly in front of our house um, if parking spots allow, but currently... It's always just been a competition for parking spots because there's just, it's a narrow street. There's already only parking on one side of the street. Um, I have three points I just wanna go over today. I think the first one is redundancy of it. Um, we already have a Nelson City bus that comes by once every 30 minutes during the week. And he's a really nice bus driver. We wave at him every day. Sometimes we chat because the bus is literally always empty. And um, the main point there is that he also, if you're standing there, he'll just stop and pick you up. Like he's just looking to fill his bus with people. And I don't really see the need for an entire bus stop that's going to remove at least 35 car parks from our street. Um, we're not sure where we would park if we, if this goes through. There is one little cul-de-sac up at the end that there's already competition for 10 parking spots, but that's about 500 meters from our property. And with a pram and a dog, um, I just would probably sell my house because it wouldn't be possible to 
live in that area. Um, I think another major factor is it's just not a safe street in general. We've had our tires slashed twice in the six years that we've lived there. There are frequently stolen cars parked in those parking spots, which we report constantly. We have a really great neighborhood. Um, one of our other neighbors is here speaking next and like we've all come together once we received this letter and we've put in our input because we really feel strongly about it and we're a tight knit community and we have to stay that way because um, there's just some safety issues in our neighborhood and I don't see how parking further from my house is going to make me feel safer in my neighborhood. Um, the final thing I just want to say is that we also have a lot of elderly people in that area um, and they use their car. I think the biggest thing, like I was at a meeting last week with Nick Smith and the biggest thing that he was saying is that 96% of Nelsonians get to school and work with a car. 3% are by bar bike and 1% is by bus. And it's great that we want to increase that. Um, but the reality is that we need somewhere to park our cars. We have no other option. And this is quite a scary proposal in the number of spots that it will take away from us. Thanks for listening. That's all I have to say. Any questions? Thank you. Any questions from councillors? No, I think that was a very clear submission. Thank you very much. Next up, we have Robin Westruff. Kia ora Robin, thanks for being here, over to you. Kira, my name is Robin Westrup. I've lived at number 18 Jenner Road for the past eight years. I wish to thank you for giving me the opportunity to speak to this panel on behalf of the Jenner Road residents and I hope in due course um, good decisions will be made. If Jenner Road was wide, there would be no issues, but it is not. If yellow lines are introduced, there will be a loss of 35 plus car parking spaces on Jenner Road for these, those residents with no garage or alternate parking areas. I submit photo one. The safety issue exists with the proposed bus stop on Murphy Street, Jenner Road corner as passengers must traverse the narrow boom on Jenner Road. Also a safety issue exists as cars turn into Jenner Road from Thompson Terrace and Murphy Street. The view to pass would be restricted by a stopped bus. Stims have advised a road closure 19th of June to cut back roadside flats. That says it all. Jenner Road is a very narrow street. Cycle lanes are not an option. Cyclists must share the footpath with children, prams, dogs, and pedestrians, or run the gauntlet at risk on a one-way option with impatient drivers and buses. The current bus drives around all but empty. I have surveyed residents, and only one household said they would catch the bus. I present you with the results of the survey, which include comments from concerned residents. Bus stops plus a two-way system would add to congestion on this road, not only rubbish and recycle days, but gas deliveries that must run a hose up to properties for refills, not to mention couriers and commercial businesses. Your Google map shows two vehicles. One is mine. I work nights and the, and the four by four was abandoned since removed. This, this picture shows an empty street, but the reality is nose to tail parking from 3 p.m. to 9 a.m. the following day. I submit photo two. I am not anti buses. The current one way system in Hale works perfectly fine without the Nelson City Council spending ratepayer dollars to install bus stops both ways, which would add to an already congested narrow strip of road and no alternate parking for residents. With the passion and common sense, we ask you to please reconsider this proposal. I apologise for my shaky voice. I am a little nervous. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for that submission. Um, can That's I submit materials. this as well? Thank you. Next up, we have Chris Kennedy. Kia ora, Chris. Uh, <laughs> um, together with my wife Donna, 
We've owned 76 Brisley Avenue on the proposed Route 4 for more than 27 years. I've spoke, uh, chosen to speak to the meeting today in respect of concerns about the safety of running these buses uh, through Moana and down Brisley. Actually builds on what previous speakers have mentioned before, and I do think this project is being terribly rushed without full public consultation, um, and there are aspects of safety which I'll touch on quickly. The e-buses are big, they're 12 and a half metres long by 2.5 metres wide, and the proposals for a service every half hour, 24 outward and 24 inward bound bus trips through Moana. This leaves a relatively narrow road, very much like Janara, um, and in negotiating this route, buses will frequently cross the centre line to pass vehicles. It's also a route used by cyclists, including school-aged children, with no scope for adding a cycle lane. Safe passing by a bus of a cyclist will also push the bus across the centre line, and we're not talking about just one or two buses a day. When Rocks Road is closed, and also at peak flow times, morning and evening, this route, uh, Route 4 through the hills, is the third route into and out of the city to the western suburbs and becomes very busy. And we know this, having lived there, obviously, for 27 years. Although that looks quiet during the day, um, this changes the road dynamics enormously. And at such times, having buses stop at the kerb during um, con will, will increase congestion and encourage unsafe, albeit illegal, driver activity. There are a number of tight bends on the hill section of Route 4, um, and I'm really interested to know, and the lady previously mentioned this, has a driver actually from Nelson Coach Lines driven the route in a 12 and a half metre bus? Is anybody from the bus company here today who can speak on what it is like to drive the route? <laughs> For example, are the e-buses able to negotiate all the, route, uh, all the bends on this route and stay within their lane without compromising the safety of oncoming traffic? We're focusing on emissions, but Waka Katahi are on the road to zero. That's their 10-year strategy to improve road safety. And I quote, safety on the roads is our top priority. Safety is a key driver of project developments with the aim to achieve safer roads and safer roadsides. And safety has to be the first priority of this project. In this respect, has an independent safety review been undertaken of the proposed route, embracing the network philosophy and detailed design of each bus stop location? For example, has the impact of curbside stops on traffic flow been fully assessed? Have the NCC considered privacy issues regarding each stop? And these e-buses are quite high, with passenger head height at about two metres. I'm not against improving the bus service. I think it's a fantastic idea, but I, I think all options have to be fully considered and, um, the, and full public consultation carried out. But that's Thank it for me. Thank you. Any questions from councillors? Okay. Thank you very much, Chris. Uh, next up, we have Nelson McEwen. Got a Nelson. Morning. Great name, dare I say. Thank you. It's my parents' idea. Uh, Chris spoke well. I don't know Chris, but he did a good job. I didn't agree with everything he said. But you'll find out about that soon. The impending route for bus services, for well, the bus every 30 minutes is an outstanding improvement to our current three times daily service. I'm from Bisley downhill from Chris. 170 times a week instead of 15. Congratulations and thank you. Lower Bisley Ave is a dangerous road, 360 metres long, 7 metres narrow, 23 driveways, 5 sharp corners, 2 of them blind. Some drivers relish the chicanes instead of slowing for them. Speed is often too high. Now, Chris, the buses will improve the speed because in the same way that the cars on the straight stretch of Bisley do, because they provide slowing chicanes. People have to stop and wait. I do agree with the cycles, pedestrians and so on. Bisley Ave is a risky place to drive. That makes it even more dangerous to walk, and many people do walk 
on Bisley Ave. It's a popular place for pedestrians crossing the beach, accessing the beach, I'm sorry, and their homes. Pedestrians are at much more risk than drivers are. The most recent injury accident on Bisley was nearly fatal. A speeding car was coming uphill, crossed the centre line on the second right-hand blind corner, and a downhill car crashed into the side of the speeding car. Driver was taken to hospital in serious condition. It wasn't fatal because all the accident participants were in cars. This blind corner is just 40 metres below the a preferred bus stop location. When a bus stops on a narrow road, some drivers lack the courtesy, grace and patience to simply stop and wait. Many will consider passing and some of them will try. Those who try will not have adequately considered a blind corner just in front of the bus. The risk of such a sudden and dangerous decision to pass the bus will eventually cause the death of a road or footpath user. That repetitive risk and eventual fatality will have been enabled by a decision to place any bus stop in the chicane section of Bisley. The risk evaporates if the bus stop stays absent from the chicanes. Many of the submissions of a bus stop placement have been about new inconvenience. My concerns are about safety and the consideration about yesterday's preference to move the 623 bus stop to number 547 has serious ramifications for safety on Bisley. I've tried to make it clear that a bus stopping in the chicanes area perhaps 4,000 times a year adds risk that doesn't exist now. And that makes exist, and that it also makes existing risks worse. I think it's unacceptable. Now, the frequent bus service will be a boon. A decision to place a bus stop in the chicanes is unacceptably dangerous. The cost of not having a bus stop in the chicanes is a mere four minute walk downhill. Once again, I want to express my appreciation for the excellent bus service coming soon. Finally, I asked two years ago for the Bisley Ave speed limit to be reduced to 30 and be enforced. It hasn't happened. We do have three cautionary warning signs. Thanks for that. It's not enough. That's all from me. Thanks for taking the time to listen. I'm happy to have questions. If you have them, please ask. Thank you very much, Nelson. Any questions from councillors? No, that was a very comprehensive submission, so thank you so much. Uh, next up, we have Anne Miller. Got Anne, thank you for joining us, and over to you. Oh, now is this on? Yes, the light was left on. Good morning to all. My name is Anne Miller. I have lived in Stoke on Nayland Road for approximately 32 years. I have asked to speak today to ensure my viewpoint is heard on the planned bus stop at the Stoke Interchange, as this is very important to me on a number of levels. I wish to start by stating that I am in support of the improved bus network and that I believe it will be a good thing for Nelson to have an improved bus service that reaches a wider area of our community going into the future. So I'm not opposed to the buses and understand that the bus stops need to be situated in accessible areas. However, I am totally opposed to the location of the main road Stoke being the site of the Stoke Interchange. I'm fully in support of the local businesses on the main road that have worked tirelessly to ensure our voices are heard and that their livelihoods are not impacted by the decisions made by the council over their consulting, which does not seem to effectively listen to the community. I attended the public meeting that was held in Stoke, and again, I felt that the council representation present did not listen effectively, and in my opinion, presented in a way that they felt that their council ideas were superior. The consultation process by council appears to be more of a lip service that is done to tick a box and does not effectively listen and take into consideration the feeling of the community. There seemed to be an attitude that because they use experts that they know best and that their info is superior. However, there is nothing that equates to the locals who live in an area who will be affected long after a decision is made by the current councillors as the locals will have to live with these decisions. 
it is imperative that the community are listened to and considered. I personally use the stops on the main road in Stoke many times per week and use them for my convenience, but more importantly, I use these to access businesses so that I can get my 92-year-old mother-in-law out for her social life, haircut, coffee and purchases all on the main road at Stoke. We cannot access these from the car park despite what's been said at meetings. There are steps, stairs to negotiate, curbs, many cars and lack of spaces, so it's not practical. It's fine for a fit person, but not so for the elderly. The street frontage in Stoke is attractive and to turn it into a bus stop would be detrimental, in my opinion, to the centre of Stoke. And I feel the use of Petaitai Street for these large buses would also be very dangerous, as already this is a very busy section of the road, full of many hazards, vehicles, children, all moving in many directions, as well as two supermarket exits. Our local business owners have done a fantastic job of putting together alternative options that the council could utilise that would work and would not affect the frontages of their businesses. And I implore the panel to really consider these options and the depth of feeling in the Stoke community when they consider the submissions presented to them. I'm proud to be part of a community that has got behind the local business owners and who are standing up for our local people as we are the ones that will have to live with the outcome of this decision long after the council staff and members move on. Thank you for the opportunity to speak. Thank you, Anne. Um, just a quick question from me. Have you seen the updated staff recommendation to place that bus stop between the youth park and the turf hotel? Yes, I have, but I still wanted to speak to yeah. my submission because I don't know that it's a decided decision. Yeah. And are you supportive of that location? Yes, that's the one yeah. that the business, local business owners have put through is the one that I'm supportive of. Thank you. Thank you. I turn this off. Yeah. Uh, next, I'd like to welcome Kim Hall up. Good morning. I am one of the business owners who was in the group that came up with the second option, the third option, the proposal that we presented at the public meeting. Um, I would like to thank the councillors that did attend the public meeting to come and get themselves informed on what we, what we um, were proposing. Today, I, I do thank the council for actually taking on board our changes and our proposal. We put a lot of time and effort into that in between running our own businesses. Um, I guess today I want to just reflect. I took the time out to read the whole 73 pages of your transport plan. And the one probably thing that stood out to me the most in that is on page 34 of your regional transport plan, which states about the, um, sorry, I'll just bring it up again. It's on page 34. 0.813 about the network nodes. Um, the <coughs> halfway through that it, it says states that you're going to have these super stops. The super stops were um, allocated for Nelson Hospital, Tahuna, Stoke, and Richmond. Um, and in these super stops, you were planning in your plan. It says these bus stops will have enclosed shelters with good lighting, ample seating and information in the form of network maps, timetables and real-time information, along with supporting facilities such as the secure cycle parking. What was presented to us initially had none of this. None of this. What we presented has more more than this, we're putting back into the youth. I don't know if you realise there's a little coffee stand down where we propose that is run by the local um, Fanaka youth community. The kids run that. It puts value back into their lives. It puts things back into their program funds. Um, we had many, many benefits 
that seem to be overlooked. So I'd like to think that today in considering your decision, you um, really take into account the benefits that this will provide to our community as opposed to what would be taken away from other members of our community by not having those car parks on the main road for easy access. We've always stated we're not opposed to the buses and we were willing to work with council. Unfortunately, consultation process fell apart. Thank you, Kim. Any questions from councillors? No, very clear submission. Thank you so much for coming in. Next up, we have Ray Weston. Good morning. Good morning. Over to you. Uh, I'm a business owner and resident of Tahuna and have been there for 20 years, over 20 years. So I'm just here today to represent some of the community feedback on the new Route 4. Uh, what I've picked up is that the Route 2, without any changes to Muratai Street, is really well accepted. And there was a lot of concern at the schools that things may change, and that would have impacted the community quite significantly. Route 4 is a fantastic addition. Uh, it's nice to see it go near the Holiday Park and the motels along Golf Road. But unfortunately, the bus stops are not well located. The, there are two bus stops at the end of Bolt Road, um, apparently for workers to catch the bus in the morning and home at night, which is great. But it's right at the end of Parker's Road, and I just wonder if it could be located a little more centrally along Bolt Road for their convenience. Uh, it, may, it may mean that there's less room. Can I get up and point up here? Yep. There's a laser pointer if you'd like. Okay. Okay. So, um, yeah, the, there's bus stops here that could be further along Bolt Road uh, to service that area. Then the, the two next bus stops are at the Parkers Road end of Golf Road. After that, the next bus stops are right down near Waikere on Beach Road. The main access for Holiday Park, there is a walkway at the end of Green Street that goes straight into the Holiday Park through here. The other access is off Beach Road. Right, none of those areas are serviced by the bus stops. I find that remarkable. Thinking of the thousands of people that use the Holiday Park, it really would, and like the people to arrive on, by, on uh, planes with luggage, uh, we're really expecting, that's unrealistic to expect them to walk the distances there. So how about we provide a bus service for our visitors and, um, uh, and for, the, for our businesses in the area? There are motels all around here as well that would appreciate uh, the changes. Uh, John Gilbertson of the Business Association suggested moving these ones here, just around somewhere on Parker's Road. And then those bus stops there be moved down towards this area here. That's it. Thank you very much, Ray, for that. Uh, any questions from councillors? Oh, really clear, helpful submission. Thank you so much. Next up, we have Lisa and Rob Post. Jordan, thanks for joining us. Hello, thank you. Bad timing to get a frog in my throat. Um, my name is Lisa. Thank you for listening to me this morning. Uh, my husband and I reside at uh, 28 Brook Street. Um, I had uh, a much longer speech prepared for this meeting, but I've changed it, uh, changed this after our latest conversation with Matt um, and recent amendment uh, of the bus stop proposal. It's been a very stressful last couple of weeks for us, as it has for many, obviously. Um, our concerns with the newly proposed bus stop is around the unattractive, uh, imposing appearance of a con concrete pad on the grassy berm uh, with its bus pole just outside um, our property and, and next door. 
um, also loitering, noise, rubbish, loss of parking and devaluation of our home, which we've recently bought. We had hoped that the bus stop with its concrete pad and pole could have been constructed a short distance further up the road where there are no houses and so zero impact uh, on homeowners. We feel this is reasonable, but if that's not a possibility and the bus stop with concrete pad is to be placed outside of our properties, then we would be satisfied with the latest fairer modified proposal from Matt of moving it just a, a couple of metres further away from our driveway, which would be uh, less impact um, uh, visually and, and in other ways. Uh, and that's it. Thank you for your time. Any questions? Any questions? Rachel. Uh, thanks very much, um, Lisa. Can you just remind me what number? Uh, 208. Yeah, thank you. It's uh, 208 to, to 10. Uh, yeah, um, that's great. I have 28, so that's oh, really sorry. helpful. Thank yeah. you. I'll be mumbling. Yeah. Cheers. Oh, thanks. Oh, it's really helpful. Trudy? Uh, okay. Thank you, Sri Chair. Sorry, you yeah. said it just moved the location just even a couple of metres. So is it right, this, like, where you were well, driving? Was, was, yeah, very, it was just 12 metres from our driveway, but with it being a concrete pad, it's like a bit of an island in the grass because there's no pathway. It's just um, uh, grass meets road. Yep. So it's, it, it's, it was just 12 metres and next door has got a 44 meter frontage we've got 20 and it was literally like very close to our driveway so now it's just been slightly moved uh where it, there's still zero uh, impact um to next door really but uh, for us at least if you know it's a small win but every meter would is, right, so right, that's about right visibility before. and accessibility to your own driveway um it, more, more about that. That it's just a vis like you know, not only visually that we have like suddenly this right. It, it looks when you when you see it, the location. It looks really right next to our driveway, and there is um, there was a, a very reasonable um, uh, possibility to just move it a fraction further along, just to be slightly less imposing uh, visually, and obviously with people standing around, okay. um, mm -hmm. and and met. Um, it's, it's, Oh, sorry. No, no, you're right. I met um, as uh, sort of, uh, you know, seeing that, you know, he could was able to move it just a, a little bit further, uh, um, which would uh, still have it a lot closer to us than our neighbours, but at least it, it's it's that little and, bit more. And where is the location of the space that you s said from your property that would not impose on any sorry, houses? Was that? You, you mentioned that there's a location that doesn't impose on property. Oh, yes, so sorry. So that's just, um, yeah, us? that's just... I can understand Matt's reasoning uh, that it's um, because he wants to have you know, the, the bus um, stops that are very sort of peering very close to each other on opposing sides. Um, but this this is uh, it's one property further out. It's, so Robinson, our road, our uh, 208 to 10 sort of meet the start of uh, Robinson Road and just across from that. So across the road, there is a, an area that is just bush um, and there's no houses. So, yeah. Yeah, so it just we just hoped that 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 it, you know it could be stretched out that far apart just to so there'd be zero impact. But um, if that's not possible, um, then it's not possible. But and we'd a like final question from Rachel. Thanks oh, very much, Lisa. I've yeah. just found I found them on Google Maps. Oh, okay, yeah. um, it, it, your house you're you're at two oh eight. Yes. Do you still have the trees and that kind of thing in front of the house? Um, it's um. Uh, yeah, the tree, trees are because we haven't, uh, we've, as I said, we've moved in. We have, haven't um, done anything with the, uh, the front. There, it is a, a quite a tree-like uh, setting, uh, hence why, obviously, also a concrete pad with a stop. You know, it's going to stand out a lot, you know, a lot more, um, a little bit like just an island of. Uh, but um, it is uh, um, different when you see it. Um, uh, and I, we don't have, a, we did have pictures which I haven't bought because, I've, as I said, I made it a little bit different in my speech today but um it's um uh, just a, a very you know um a, a country-like setting of of uh, uh the two with our two houses thank you very much lisa for that yep. um for coming in and engaging yep. on this next up we've got carl hadfield Kia ora. So obviously I'm not Carl. Um, Ali Wood, um, I'm one of his uh, employees. I also live in Nalen Road and I 
don't really like the interchange being outside the businesses, but I have a speech today. So <laughs> I, as I said, I'm reading this on behalf of Carl Hadfield, the, the owner of the Veggie Guy in Stoke. I have, he has been a very vocal opponent of the original proposal to put the new Stoke bus interchange outside the businesses on the Red Stoke. And I'm part of the business group who arranged the petition, the public meeting at Stoke Rugby Club, and who provided the alternative proposal where the interchange has, was moved to the Stoke Memorial Hall. I do support a decent bus service, and I'm hopeful the better coverage and greater frequency coupled with lower cost will make the new bus, bus service a viable and transportable option. I'm incredibly disappointed in the initial lack of consultation with, with affected businesses around their original interchange site. The consultation consisted of five basic variations of one poorly planned and designed option with no details whatsoever. I would like to acknowledge that Alec Ludovic apologised on behalf of the Council at our public meeting on this May 22nd for the symbolic handling of the consultation meeting held at Green Meadows on, in early April. And it was this meeting and the five weeks of silence from the council staff that prompted our business group to launch our petition. Our objective was simple. We wanted to show the council this was simply not a whinging business owner or two, but a community standing together. We wanted the council to revisit the proposed site and highlight to the public the lack of consultation, poor planning, poor design work and lack of due diligence by council staff. This petition has gained 1,554 signatures in the hard copy, plus 834 online, with a total of 2,388. The hard copies were only available in the Stoke businesses, and on analysis of the 1,554, 1,091 were from Stoke, 256 from the rest of Nelson, 169 from Tasman, and 33 from outside our region. This shows that Stoke is not a regional shopping destination like the Richmond Mall, but it is a community shopping centre. I'd like to present this, peti this petition to the hearing panel on behalf of the Stoke Business Group and the thousands of community supporters we have. I'm glad to read that our proposal for shifting the interchange to the Soak Memorial Hall has been recommended by council staff. I believe that this option ticks all the boxes outlined in the Nelson Tasman Regional Transport Plan, provides a starting point for the redevelopment of this area. It also is safer for pedestrians and motorists, as well as providing greater security for the Stoke Youth Park. A full list of the benefits is attached in today, to, to today's agenda. Finally, I'd like to highlight that despite the differences of opinion and the poor conduct of some council staff in the beginning, we've been able to work together in the, on the parking changes for Main Road Stoke and would like to build on this relationship for future projects affecting our community. That's because Stoke wants better, deserves better, and is sick of being Nelson's poor cousin. Thank you. Thank you, Elian. Um, and please pass on our thanks to Carla as well for that engagement. Uh, next up, we have Andrew Murray. Sure, to Andrew, thank you for joining us. Good morning, everyone. Um, talking about Route 4 and the proposed bus stop outside 145 Moana Avenue, where I reside with my family. Uh, so let me start by saying we're supportive of the intent of the Regional Public Transport Plan. However, we're concerned with the proposed selection um, of the location outside our house for the following reasons, and, and principally, Number one is health and safety. The road is simply not wide enough at its proposed location to allow a bus to park and enable uphill and downhill traffic to safely pass and use the road, particularly considering the reduced visibility caused by the bus, uh, 
um, and the excessive speed of vehicles travelling in both directions, particularly up the hill. To put that into context, the curb to curb, and in fact it's not a curb on the on the um, eastern side, is 7.15 metres. The bus is taking 2.5. Waka Katahi allows 2.5 metres for a width of a standard vehicle. You need a centre line. So it's already 7.6 metres without any room to pass. So it's physically not possible. So the impact of 48 bus movements per day will create a major traffic congestion, impede traffic flow, and will create health and safety issues, including potential accidents, and let's hope none of them are fatal, because they will happen. The second is patronage. It's unclear from the RPTP what level of market research has been undertaken in terms of localised patronage. However, I've canvassed the immediate neighbours, and none have indicated they will use this service from the proposed bus location. So I'm concerned the bus will stop and no one will get on and off. So why would you put it there? Car parking. The adverse impact on the reduction of residential parking um, that are often used by contract, funnily enough, roading contractors have been used in the last 10 months, um, tradesmen, family members, friends and general visitors, as these are the first parking spaces available from the Stencil Avenue roundabout in the south end. Uh, bus access, I'm not sure how passengers are proposed to get on off the bus given there's an existing garden right adjacent to the footpath. Um, there's been no communication about removal of such, and I presume that any decision will be subject to separate consultation with the local residents. Given these concerns, we believe the proposed location needed to be repositioned to a wider part of the road and suggest an adjacent to day's track, uh, which would enable the bus to pull off the road um, or very slightly towards the entrance to Moncrief that's wider and it would be a safer location for both passengers plus overall traffic management and movement. So it was disconcerting to receive an updated supplementary agenda distributed by Matt Bruce at 4.56 last night, stating feedback and alternative location provided have been considered and the current location proposed remains the preferred location. So I'd like to understand the basis for reaching this decision, considering legitimate concerns that have been raised. But finally, you know, in addition to all that, now, Moana Avenue as a bus route should be revisited uh, considering Nelson City Council have closed this road for the last 10 months, declaring it unsafe um, and is in the process of erecting a special retaining barrier fence to protect vehicles from falling debris and rocks rolling down the hillside above the road, uh, which is clearly a major health and safety risk. And patrons on a bus being at that height, the fence will not save a boulder from hitting them. And I would dearly hope that this is seriously considered because these are valid concerns um, and need to be treating accordingly. We're talking about potential um, life. So thank you. Thank you, Andrew. Any questions from councillors? No, that was a very clear submission, so thank you for coming in. But I would like, the key is I'd like to understand why based on the concerns raised, that the location remains. And I'd like to understand the feedback loop for that, please, and when I'll be notified, because I'm representing the local local residents. So we can follow up with you. We've got quite a few public forums to get through, and that will be presented um, once we come to the, these items in the right. agenda. With the 1st of August start, it doesn't leave much time, does it? Thank you. Thank you, Andrew. Uh, next up, we have Andy Wells. Good, Andy. Good Thanks right. for joining us. Thank you. Um, I bring up my notes. I'm the owner and resident of 92 Westbrook Terrace. Um, all about sustainable transport options for a greener future. Um, I really appreciate um, what you're doing with e-buses and proposed routes and options. Sounds fantastic. I've got three points regarding the proposal of a bus stop outside 92 Westbrook Terrace. First thing, and it seems to be a trend, is safety. Um, outside 92 Westbrook Terrace is a clear bottleneck within the road um, where the road, the, the street itself, the one-way system um, clearly narrows outside of 92 Westbrook Terrace. Um, and with that comes a range of safety issues that I, I'd like to bring up. Um, the fantastic bike park up the top of Codgers there 
brings an immense amount of bike traffic up and down both way, one way systems of Westbrook Te- oh, the, the Brook Street and Westbrook Terrace. Um, and with a proposed bus stop outside Westbrook, Te- oh, 92 Westbrook Terrace would, um, and, uh, would, would not be safe in my view. Traffic flow, it seems to be quite a high flow of traffic through there on a one way street where um, the proposal of a, a bus stop is not ideal in this position. Another point is a loss of valuable on-street car parking outside my property. My guests will need to park further away from my property. Um, there seems to be a lot of tradesmen with vehicles, with trailers, um, will have limited access to properties around this bus stop. And also a devaluation of my property if this bus goes ahead. Potential loitering of the neighbouring people around the outside of my house may lead to neighbouring dogs barking and potential vandalism around the streets. My proposal is consider moving the bus stop location north outside number 58 or south to 126 where the streets are wider and it seems logical to me to add a bus stop in this location where safety won't be compromised. Thank you. Thanks, Andy. Any questions from councillors? No, very clear submission, so thank you for coming in. All right, next up we have David James. Welcome, David. Thank you. Yeah, um, hearing is difficult for me, so please bear with me. Yeah, David James is my name and my wife, Vicky. We live in Golden Bay, but we have an apartment at the Sands Complex. My concern just coming along here today is we put a submission in for it. We've had no acknowledgement from the Nelson City Council. You've received it. And is that being included in your decision? Um, I've lived at the Sands Complex on and off between Golden Bay and here for 11 years. There's 40 residents come out of this gateway where you're proposing to put a bloody great bus 12, 13 metres long. Cars come up Bisley Avenue, round a corner, and bang, you've got a blind spot. You can't see them. So I hope you're going to put a bus in that bus stop and just see what the practical effect is going to have, or is it just going to be a desktop presentation on this? Consultation, I received this Queen's birthday weekend um, only because someone dropped it in a letterbox. You have our postal address, nothing from the City Council what was happening. So your communication, I'm sorry, is dreadful for owners in a place like that. There is nowhere for tradesmen to park. If you take that bus stop away, there is no parking for tradesmen with higher than a car vehicle to service the Sands complex. And I would say if you went back to you, the resource consent, I'm pretty sure it says there needed to be parking, public parking there for that reason. So please do your homework on that. And um, when we send something, Matt, please acknowledge that it's been included in today's decision. Thank you. Thanks, David, and we'll follow up on, on what's happened there. Uh, thank you. And then finally in our public forum, Dennis Goodman. Kia ora, Dennis. Thanks for joining us. And pass over to you. <laughs> Good morning, everybody. Um, I think that my major concern has actually um, been addressed, and that was the bus park in front of the businesses in the main road stoke. Um, from what I understand, and I stand corrected if I'm wrong, uh, the current or the new proposal is to situate that bus stop outside the Turf Hotel, which, in my view, is a much more logical place to have it. Um, 
Yes, I'm a resident of Stoke. I live in Norwich Street. Uh, I do have some other concerns, though. Um, the main one being the f f bus going along the main road, then turning into Pataitai Street, and then into Neil Avenue, and then right into Songer Street. Now, anyone who lives in Stoke knows that Pataitai Street is pretty congested at the best of times, and that little south section of Neil Avenue is also pretty busy. And as um, Councillor Rollo reminded me just before, um, we have the avid problem of the new world um, service trucks being parked on Neil Avenue uh, while they unload. So to get a bus going past the um, those trucks and with all the other vehicles parked is going to be a problem. Um, I, I, I really think that the uh, it is far better to make a bit of a redesign of the corner of the main road in Songer Street so that the buses can actually turn directly down Songer Street. Um, one other concern, I, uh, it's not really a concern, but I just wonder of the consultation process. Um, we were told about how these services um, it were going to be improved for the people of West Stoke, and I, I agree with that, especially in my area. But I just wonder whether West Stoke included the area south of Songer Street, down past Aldinger Avenue and down towards Echo Dale Place. Um, those people are still without a bus service, and I was thinking that with all the businesses down at um, Eckerdale Place, a number of workers would probably want to use those bus services if one was put there. So I, that, that's just something I put out there for some thought. That's all I have. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dennis. Question from Rachel. Um, thanks very much, Dennis. I um, really appreciate your submission. I'm just wondering if you're aware that part of the bus services for Stoke also include an on-demand service. So specifically for Stoke, there's going to be a almost like a kind of um, Uber-type bus, smaller bus, that services the Stoke area. Uh, yes, I, I, I'm certainly aware of the on the proposal for the on demand, and uh, that that's that's to be welcomed. Um, actually, I use the existing service that comes up Norwich Street from time to time if I'm carrying too much. So, um, yeah, that that certainly is a welcome addition. I, I'm a great supporter of public transport. Yeah, the more public transport we can get, and the less reliance on cars, and the less cars in the cities, the better. I just wondered if that might address your last concerns that you raised about the service not meeting some people. I think the on-demand service will, you know, cover the entirety of Stoke, every street, basically. Yeah, no, I, I welcome that. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you very much. That brings us to the end of our public forum. Um, before we take a five-minute break, I'll just see if we can push through on confirming the minutes uh, of the hearings panel held on the 18th of May, 2023. Uh, so, well, As the chair of that, I will happily move that. Thank you. Moved by Councillor Fran, seconded by Councillor Sampson, an impressive six-minute long meeting there. Um, I will put uh, that we confirm those minutes. All those in favour, please say aye. Any opposed? That is carried. Uh, and we will now adjourn for a five minute break.
All right, we will get started again. Um, just in terms of the order of business, we're going to run through the um, other two items on our agenda around road naming and a temporary road closure. We're then gonna um, have another adjournment uh, to read through a table document of further feedback, um, and then we'll come to consideration of the parking vehicle control bylaw amendments to schedule, aka the bus stops. Uh, so I will welcome Bernadette to the table um, for road naming of Quickly Grove Limited. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I just want to introduce so Bernadette Powers is um, the member of staff in the resource consent team who is the report writer for this. And just to my right here is Aaron Adcock who is representing Toy Toy Grove Limited. So we'll take the report as read and happy to answer any questions. Are there any questions from councillors on this one? No, pretty clear cut, easy one. Um, would someone like to move? Move, Councillor Fran, seconded Councillor Sampson. Uh, I will now open for debate. Being none, I will uh, now put the resolution. All those in favour, please say aye. Aye. Uh, that motion is carried, and we have now named Golden Elm Rice. Can I just make it? Uh, which now brings us to the next item, which is the temporary road closure for Te Ramaroa Light Festival 2023. Welcome Alec and Gillian to the table. Um, through the chair, this is a, a standard report. We will take it as read, but uh, Gillian Dancy is the, um, the author of the report and she'll be able to answer any um, questions. Thank you. Are there any questions on this temporary road closure? I'm happy to move it when I'm in due course. Happy to second that. I can half sense a question growing from Council Brand. All right, then. Uh, we have this resolution's moved and seconded, uh, so I will open for debate. Councillor Sanson. Very happy to um, move this. Um, yeah, I think Te Ramaroa Light Festival is one of the highlights of our, um, you know, the community's calendar, so yeah, really um, happy to support this. Councillor Brand. I'll just try a comment in the debate. Um, looking forward to Light Festival every second year. It's fantastic. I know the community really get behind it because it's the winter um, winter activity that brings everybody out of their homes um, during the cold, so that's quite cool. Um, I am interested in, and looking forward to see the um, impact of it moving to the Church Steps location away from the NMIT normal location down Hunter Street, so that will be quite an interesting um, update to get the feedback on the new location for the main hive. Thank you. Thank you. I will now put the resolution. All those in favour, please say aye. Aye. That motion is carried. All right. Uh, we have a documents tabled, uh, which is further feedback on the proposed bus stops. So we are now going to take a 15 minute adjournment just to give members a chance to read and consider that material. Question from Councillor Sampson. And is, is it additional to what was sent through last night? Yes. Okay. Uh, I'll, so the question there was, is why, why is this being tabled now? And I'll pass over to... Uh, through the Chair, this is just to bring to our attention the further um, feedback we received since we sent out that last updated report. So that's to give you the full suite of information. All right, so we are now adjourned for another 15 minutes.
we're going to get started on um, our item number eight, nine, eight and nine, uh, the Parking Vehicle Control Bylaw Amendments to Schedule. Uh, so I will pass over to Alec and the team uh, to introduce and speak to this paper. Um, thank you through the chair. So um, we'll be um, presenting as a team today. So on my right, uh, Mr. Matt Bruce, and on my left, uh, Mr. Drew Bryant, and um, they have been uh, very, very involved in the rollout of uh, public transport and will be um, happy to answer any questions. As you know, there was an original report that went out, a supplementary report and an additional information this morning that was to facilitate um, all feedback that has since come in to give the committee um, the, the meeting, sorry, the, um, the full suite of feedback. Um, I uh, will take the reports as read. I will um, just highlight um, that we have a, a new, um, the reason we're here is to consider um, uh, what's in front of you in terms of bus stops and changes required. This is to facilitate our new public transport um, service, which is um, um, being launched on the 1st of August. And uh, what is uh, placed in front of you is to make that a success. Um, so other than that, I will um, take the reports as read and happy to, to answer any questions um, through the chair and happy for you to raise the order in which you actually want us to address the, the matters in front of you. All right, I'll open first. Um broadly for any questions. Um, we'll sort of work through this. There's a lot to get through, so we'll go with the the energy in the room um, on this. Uh, but yeah, I'll first open for just any of those broader questions, um, which I'm happy to kick us off with, uh, is there's been questions around uh, just the route testing. So have we driven these routes with a 12 meter bus. So, <clears throat> excuse me, through this year, um, we have driven all the routes with our public uh, services contractor. Um, we don't have the 12 meter buses here at the moment, so we've been using a 14 meter bus as a substitute, um, being the largest bus that will use these routes. Thank you, Drew. Any other high level questions? Otherwise, we'll start going through route by route. Councillor Sampson. General or specific route? Yeah, let's keep it. I'll wait. I'll hold okay. my question. Thanks. Uh, so we'll kick off into route one. Oh, Councillor Sampson. I've got a high level one, a general one. Um, I, I understand that this is um, obviously we've got the 1st of August rollout, but that the entire, all of the stops and everything, the routes and that kind of thing, will be reviewed within 12 months. So we will be, you know, there'll be the potential for kind of some improvements to stops or um, some modification um, within 12 months, depending on the feedback we get. Is that correct? Um, so through, through the chair, yes, um, with, the, with every new service, um, especially this one of such a magnitude, um, with the new routes and a whole lot of new um, 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 aspects to it, we will constantly monitor this and we have undertaken to, to do a full review within 12 months, but we will certainly be monitoring this on a monthly, to, uh, on a monthly basis to make sure that everything is operating. So absolutely yes to your, your question. All right, any questions on route one with those proposed changes and additions? Not seeing any, that was, oh, Councillor Sampson. That's, can I just ask, so are we referring to the supplementary agenda now for this? Yes. Yeah, okay. So that is the six stops um, under Route 1, which... Councillor Sampson. Um, so, yeah, I think what I'm just curious about here is, um, so on page four um, of the supplementary agenda, looking at the Nayland Road, um, 111, 119, so where it says preferred, when we um, approve these today, we are approving the preferred option, 119 Nayland Road. Is that correct? Or 
so we're on to route two there. Oh, um, sorry. Yep, yep. Nice. No, so, yeah, I just saw the but, uh, route two. There. We'll yep. be looking at those options yeah, okay. and then progressing through on which. Um, but as a baseline, the preferred is what the recommendation is. Yeah. Is that correct? Uh, correct. The, the supplementary report covers all of the changes proposed and we officers are recommending two options. We've highlighted them in red. Um, we've put a preferred option beside each. Yes. So that's that's the officer recommendation. All right. So we'll, having no questions on Route 1, we'll move on to Route 2. And I wonder if... Uh, Councillor Brand, Route 1? The feedback about the Collingwood Street opposite the Fresh Choice, it's got the officers have considered this feedback and proposed and saw the bus stop as part of the first force launch, but monitor patronage nets. And when the Miller's Acre is complete, it's proposed that we access the usage, consider the continued use of the stop if data shows minimal uses. So is that based on the, um, the submission from the dentist and about access and isolating the building at 72 Collingwood Street and adjacent car park area. Has that all been addressed? Uh, so through the chair, the, the feedback regarding that stop, um, the, the officer recommendation to that was that we would review it um, in the 12 month period. Um, obviously when Miller's Acre is developed into the ultimate bus hub, um, obviously that stop or termination will come closer to this bus stop. If we find that people walk that short distance, this one may become obsolete. So we'll assess that at the time. In terms of um, restricting future development, we've gone back to the, the submitter on that and said that um, we would work with them if they've decided to develop the property and we could alter the bus stop or parking to suit. So. Okay, thank you. All right, uh, moving on to Route 2, I wonder if um, officers could just first speak to um, those changes that are proposed uh, as part of the supplementary agenda. Certainly. Um, so in Route 2 in the supplementary, you'll see the red highlighted uh, changes. So the first one on that list is uh, Innersbrook Drive near Quarantine Road. Uh, there are existing bus stops but won't be serviced by uh, Route 2 anymore. We've decided to actually leave that one in. It's a, it's a stop that the late, late bus could use um, on its journey back into, into Stoke. Um, we'd look to remove the bus shelter but leave the physical bus marking so that the bus could use it. Um, following on to the next one, so 111 Nayland Road. So we've had um, quite a bit of feedback about this one and uh, the residents um, submitted an alternate proposal that actually we supported and, and looked to um, look to move it down the road. That's outside the church. Um, it's about a 30, 40 metre move. Um, so we supported that um, and we're preferring that as our preferred option. Uh, Nayland Road next outside Paul Green Intermediate. So there's been some ongoing discussion with uh, both Paul Green and Nayland College. At this stage, we're proposing to leave this stop out um, and that we'd consider the, um, the feedback from, from passengers and drivers in due course. We're willing to work with the schools as well and survey the teachers to see how many would use this service and where they'd like the stop to be located. And we'll come back to this one in future if there's a, a desire to have one in this proximity. So that goes the same for Program and Nayland College. Um, Nayland Road outside 271. So we've had, um, we've had some feedback about this one. A lot of residents concerned about the loss of parking, um, congestion. Um, there's obviously a lot of usage of Broad Green House. So they're suggesting they move this one uh, to 253 Nayland Road, which is near Andrew Street. Um, this is an area where there's um, no stopping currently, so there'll be no loss of parking. Um, officers have looked at this and we are preferring this as our revised location. Um, it puts the two stops very close to each other and near a crossing point of um, Nayland Road for, for pedestrians. I move on to Main Road Stoke outside Countdown. We had originally proposed to remove the stop completely. However, with Route 1 continuing down Main Road Stoke, we feel we'll leave it in and that people could still get off at Countdown if they chose to, so, or get on. Um, and then the last one on that list is the Nayland Road, Nayland College, which I've discussed previously. So that's all of the, the changes for Route 2 that we're proposing. Open for questions there. Councillor Brand. Uh, thank you, through the Chair. Um, the yellow lines um, on Nayland Road, then you said there will be no loss of parking and you'd support that. Why were the yellow lines there in the first place and then does that increase or decrease the safety issue? 
Uh, so through the chair, um, we're looking to make some ultimate changes to Andrew Street itself um, to improve the pedestrian facilities through that area. Um, we feel that because the bus is so infrequently parked here, 97 percent of the time there will be no bus so in those times the visibility is no different the short period where the bus is there picking up or dropping off a passenger we don't feel that's going to have an impact on the safety of either andrew street or the pedestrian facilities so okay so then through the chair subsequent question would then the communication um go out to the public to ensure that the road users are aware of this now change having been aware that there is no stopping and they can continue that this would then be something they need to take into account so educational communication with the community uh, through the chair i think all of these changes will be socializing with the wider community about where the changes occur um, in terms of physically making this change we'd look to put up some road layout change signs and we'd leave those in for about a week or so so people get familiar with the with the alteration um, so there's physically something different in that environment Any other questions on route two, Trudy? I love questions. Um, so the church, you have approached the church and they were fine about the bus stop moving into that vicinity? Uh, so third year we have um, emailed the church, um, which is based out of, was a Wellington email address that we went to. Um, we haven't had any feedback regarding that one. Okay, but you haven't physically talked to anybody here that operates out of the church? I have tried to. Um, we had a phone number, which I tried to get through to, but we were unable to get hold of anyone. Okay. So. There was in one of the submissions um, some concern about the funerals and things like that that may happen in that and the busyness in that space. Would the bus stop being at that location impede or have any safety concerns or um, detrimental impact towards a funeral being held in that location? Uh, through, through the chair, the, the church does have quite a substantial amount of off-street parking, um, so we don't see it as being any different to having normal parking on the road. So. Rachel? Um, thanks. Yeah, I think I was initially, I had some concerns that um, Nayland Interme um, Broad Green and Nayland College stops were being removed, but I... Um, there are, you know, the I think the one that is to the north is 300 metres away and the one that's to the south is 400 metres away. And I did some informal um, testing of young people in the neighbourhood and they reckon that that was, you know, okay. So, um, yeah, I'll be interested to see the feedback from the schools, you know, through the 12-month review. But um, I think um, the preferred options that you've landed on for both um, make sense. It's still close enough to service the schools for teachers and that kind of thing as well. Any other questions on Route 2? All right, we will move on to Route 3. And again, just invite officers to highlight any, uh, obviously there is that um, table of, of changes, but just to highlight any of the thinking behind the updated uh, schedule. Yeah, <clears throat> excuse me, through the chair, um, looking at the Dobson Valley uh, and also the Werner Street and Rainbow Drive uh, locations, um, those bus stop locations were intended to, uh, to link uh, Artified Crescent up with Bayview Road. Um, uh, at the time that we were undertaking the design of the routes, it was in, uh, it was conceived that the route would be there, the road network would be in place. Um, indeed, that hasn't transpired. Um, so we are just recommending that we don't do those bus stops uh, until we actually get that. So we suggest that that would be something that we review in 12 months' time if indeed the road or the linkage is there. Question from Councillor Sansa. Um, thanks for that, and um, just seeking clarification. <laughs> um, is, does that mean that there is, a, or does a road, is there a bus service up Dodson Valley Road or, or not? Um, currently the, uh, the on, de uh, on demand, sorry, uh, the, uh, the hail and ride service does go around that area. Um, the, the route which is Route 3, will we'll go into uh, Artified Crescent and use the current bus stops that are on Artified Crescent. Okay. Um, and has consideration been had for um, secure bike parking down at the Artified Crescent 
um, stop. Uh, I've had feedback from um, people actually who live out at Hera, um most significantly who actually come in, they um, come into that part of the city and then park their car and bike to work. Um, and they had suggested, yeah, um, that there has been kind of questions about having secure bike parking at the um, Atify Crescent Little Hub. Um, <clears throat> at this stage, in terms of rollout for 1st of August, we haven't considered putting bike parking in. But with all of these bus stops where possible, we've tried to site them in locations that have um, a bit more space to, one, be able to provide for shelters in the future, uh, but two, also other facilities like bike parking, secure bike parking. Councillor Brand. Thank you, for the Chair. Um, just the... <sighs> I noticed that a lot of the Dodson Road is all being taken out because that bus stop's no longer required. And the Wicker Street ones are a new location with the Miyazi Gardens, which would be fantastic in the cemetery. Um, are there other changes to like go into that space to ensure that the safety of people getting on and off the bus or um, accessing the cemetery and the gardens and that is taken into account? As I'm aware, there has been some... Um, speed issues and um, other not so healthy vehicle activity in that space. Yeah, through the chair. So um, there are new locations for us that we're willing, looking to formalise as a bus stop. Um, we are looking to provide concrete pads where people can get off and wait or stand for the bus when it comes. Um, our speed management plan, um, as we consult on that, this will take into consideration this road. So um, there could be future changes in the area also to support this. Okay, thank you. Because I know there's a bit of a blind spot as you come around that bend as well. Um, and then the Tresillian Ave new locations, there's a lot of good support for that, which is great, um, especially for the school. But there was another proposal um, talking about the safety um, and that, and I noticed that this is the red, the new red edition. Um, submission. Um, so you've got in there that you'll monitor the location during the first 12 months. So does that, have the actual safety concerns in the parking and the accessibility to and fro, has that been addressed with the submitter? Uh, through the chair, so that the feedback has been presented, um, raw data as it's come into us, so you get to see what, what the people have submitted. Um, the stop locations we've looked at um, uh, to ensure that people can get off the bus safely and can wait for the bus in a, in a dedicated area. Um, you touched on that Tresillian did have quite a quite a lot of positive support um, in terms of the area up there, but with all of this, that 12-month period, we'll be monitoring the, the usage, the feedback from drivers, community feedback, and if changes are needed, then that's something we can certainly look at. So. Okay, thank you. If, if I may, Brian, um, and can I continue in terms of the changes on the rest of... Uh, route three on that one. We covered the Dodson. Yep. Um, in terms of uh, Adify Drive opposite Miyazu Gardens, um, you'll see there we put modified based on feedback. Um, the submitter had a approved driveway crossing where he's willing to, we're looking to build a property. So we're just going to relocate this one slightly to accommodate that. Um, in terms of Amano Street, we are looking, and this is a change from uh, the current. Uh, proposal in this supplementary report. So 54 and 60 Amano Street, uh, we're actually recommending that we table that today and we leave those stops and that we come back to a future hearings panel after we can work a little bit more with that community in terms of finding an um, appropriate solution for, for a stop in that area. So that goes the same for 54 and 60 Amano Street. Uh, the last one on that list is um, Vanguard Street, uh, so outside the Red Cross. So we've provided two options here. One is outside the Red Cross, the other is outside Adito um, across their driveway. Um, feedback from both parties is that they don't wish to have the bus stop in this location, um, citing the loss of parking for their business, um, for access and for overall safety of the road. Um, at this stage, we're preferring the Red Cross um, in front of the, the shop um, as a preferred location. 
question, Councillor Brand. Thank you through the chair. You mentioned in Mano Street, we heard submissions about Jenna Road. What was the conversation and the decision about that? Um, so, so, so through the chair, we've had a bit of a discussion about um, Jenna Road and taking the uh, the views of our um, the feedback. What we're proposing um, is not to proceed with the bus stops um, on Jenna Road. Uh, we will still have the bus service um, uh, along those routes. And uh, as with everything, we will we will we will monitor that. But we're proposing, um, based on the feedback, um, that uh, we would put no bus stops uh, along Jenna Road. And just to be fair with that proposal, that's not affecting the proposal for no stopping on the cliffs side for bus and emergency service access. Uh, through the chair, correct. Um, the, the no stopping is still required for the bus service. Um, removing the bus stops would gain some car parking back in those locations. Thank you. Trudy. Uh, will you be having those because of the level of um, submissions interest? Um, will you be having those conversations directly with the submitters um, to ensure they are aware of the change that has been tabled today? Um, through the chair, what we were, what we are planning to do is to write to everybody uh, with the final council resolution, so they will they will know what's in and what's out. Yes, Rachel. <laughs> Um, thanks. So I just wanted to clar um, um, clarify what the plan was with the moment with the Amano Street stops, because I didn't fully understand that nothing is happening, and they're going to be there's going to be more work done, or there are existing stops and they're just staying there. Or can you just sorry, it was yeah, a, bit, a bit quick for me to keep um, exactly you said. To, 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 yeah, um, we originally proposed a location outside 54 and 55 Amano Street. Um, that was option one of the plans. Um, based on the feedback, um, there's a lot of rental properties down there, so have a lot of cars and, and would like a place to park, particularly trades vehicles. Um, so we took that feedback on board. We looked at an alternate location near number 60 and outside the church. Um, we've also had feedback about that and the loss of parking and um, access to those properties. So what we're recommending here is that we go away and work with those submitters and try and find a, a solution that would accommodate their concerns. So. Okay, that's really clear. Um, so are there existing stops in that area that will be utilised in the meantime, just assuming that there are people still need to be able to get on the bus? Through the chair, no. Uh, this is a new location. Um, the nearest stops on Amano are near Toy Toy intersection or around on Murphy Street. Okay, so, so the bus will still go past, and once the area for it to stop is resolved, then people will be able to get on it? Correct. Okay, thanks. Um, just just to follow up on that, you're imagining to bring that you'd be bringing back an updated Amano Street resolution to a hearings panel prior to August 1st? That would be the intention, yes. Any further questions on Route 3? Seeing none, we'll move on to Route 4 and again just pass over to officers to give an overview. Uh, through the Chair, so Route 4 um, proposed changes. Um, 208 210 Brook Street, so you heard this morning in public forum um, the desire to have a change there. We as officers have looked at that feedback. It is quite a minor change, so we're um, recommending that we do make that change. However, we would bring it back to the next hearings panel. Um, updating the schedules themselves and getting the measurements correct is, is important. So we'd bring that back to formalise it at the, at the later hearing panel. Uh, that's not highlighted currently and read on your um, supplementary report. Continuing down that list. Uh, so Bolt Road, uh, we have one, two, well, 117 and 127 Bolt Road and 121 Bolt Road. This is near Fulton Hogan down the far end. Um, we've had feedback from both Fulton Hogan and Miller's Landscapes. They've provided us alternate locations um, which satisfy both of their concerns and, and um, that they raise in the area. Officers have looked at those alternate locations and we're supportive of making those changes. So we are recommending the preferred option as option two in each of those. 
Uh, Bisley Ave behind uh, the sands. Um, this is an area we have had a lot of feedback on. Um, there are two car parks near the sands. Um, otherwise, parking is quite limited on road. Um, so what officers have done here is we are pre preferring that a stop is installed uh, for people to get on or get off from the airport. Um, however, we've provided option two there is that councillors may decide not to install this. Um, and it's an area that we could monitor the feedback going forward and bring it back to a future hearing panel if that was this, the decision made. Uh, the next one on the list is 63 Bisley Ave. Uh, this is an area we've had some feedback around uh, safety, um, access to and from driveways. Um, and we've had a lot of alternate locations proposed, which is outside 45, 47 Bisley. Those properties um, back onto Bisley Ave, but they're actually accessed on the lower side. Um, so there's not as much impact on people's driveways and having the bus in front of their, their house. So we, we've taken that on board. It's a minor change, and we are preferring that we do relocate it a little bit further down the road to this location, uh, which is option two. And that's the summary of changes. There's one for 53 Beach Road. So this is not shown in the supplementary report. Uh, we've had some, some late feedback and discussions with residents at 53 uh, Beach Road. Uh, officers are recommending that we actually table that one today and push it to the next hearings panel. So not install 53 Beach Road um, and look to offset those two bus stops. So stagger them so that there is some parking closer to properties in the area. So that's some feedback we're willing to take on board and, and make a change there. It's just we won't do it today. It'll be a future hearings panel. So that was 53 Beach Road. And sorry, Matt, could you also just highlight what the earlier one that was also proposed to be tabled? The earlier one was on 208 210 Brook Street. Great. Thank you. Questions, Rachel. Um, thanks. So I've got a couple of questions. I think one is um, we heard feedback today of around 92 Westbrook Terrace and a suggestion of um, possible relocation to 58 Westbrook Terrace. Um, you know, I would um, encourage us, if we didn't reconsider that today, just having done a street view, look at both, that if we didn't reconsider that today, that we definitely earmark that for review within 12 months. Um, I think that the impact um, on the 92 Westbrook Terrace property is fairly significant. Their home looks onto the street and it's you know going to be right there further down at um, 58 Westbrook Terrace. You know, there is quite a big off street um, area that would buffer those homes from the um, bus stop and maybe provide more space for waiting and that kind of thing. Um, and then just wanted to check around um, the Bisley Ave. We heard concerns today around bus stops within the chicanes on Bisley Ave, and I just wondered if officers had a comment on that. Are the bus, proposed bus stops within the chicanes or are they now moved outside? Uh, through the chair, um 40 Bisley Ave, so this is the, the stop that was referred to in the, the, the chicane section. Um, on the original report that came out and also included in the supplementary, we've recommended that we delete that stop, so physically not install it now, um, and that we monitor the feedback, and if there's a desire to have a stop here, we'd go back and reconsider other options. Um, we had looked at um, providing no um, double yellow lines to ensure that people wouldn't overtake the bus when it was parked in the stop. Um, we've heard a lot of feedback and concern about that, and we've, we've said we won't install it for now. Okay, thanks. And then the only other question for this route from me is um, just the comments around having a bus stop located in the vicinity, I think it was, um, on Bolt Road of Green Road so that people can get to and from the, um, you know, Tohunanui Beach Camp. I just wondered um, what consideration there had been for that, like a, it kind of, it, it's quite a reasonable suggestion, um, especially if we've got people coming to and fro from the airport or wanting to go from the campground into town and that kind of thing. 
near uh, through the chair. Indeed, there is that walkway <coughs> close to Green Street uh, that accesses the Tahunui Hollow Camp from um, from Golf Road. Um, look, that was considered um, uh, when we were looking at these stop locations. Um, but we felt as though it was better to sort of split the difference between that walkway and Parker's Road. So yes, we do realise that there will be a number of holiday park um, people that will use these bus stops, and they do have the option of the, the stop further down Beach Road, uh, closer to um, uh, Waikari Street. Um, but also there's a number of permanent residents along Parker's Road um, that we're also trying to address as well. So we, we tried to address the uh, the holiday park and also permanent residents on Parker's Road. So we thought that was a good compromise. Okay, thanks. Trudy. Thank you, Trudy Chair. Just um, sort of following on from that, the submitter this morning talked about the, the bus stop at the corner of... Parkers and Beach, and then on the bolt, and suggest And you just mentioned about the, in response to Councillor Sanson's question, um, that's quite a, a an interesting intersection coming around that bend, and people going straight or can come around the bend, and whether they indicate or not and stuff. So having a bus stop so close to that end, the safety and the traffic and the um, how was that sort of like factored in? Because it's quite a blind corner, but it's also quite a busy corner. Uh, to, to, yeah, so is this, this is the park is turning yeah, into Bolt into Road, it. so from the roundabout. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, so you come down past the thing and you're heading into that busy corner to head down Beach Road where that bus stop is. Yeah, um, so the, the bus stop we're proposing there is, um, it's very close to Aleron. Um, it's sitting in a, a, what is currently parking. Oh, yeah, no, that one's a good one. That, that's Sorry. The <laughs> so when you come off Bolt Road and you go down Parkers and you're heading on to Beach Road and you've got the bus stop right there, you have it up on the picture this morning and the submitter was pointing. Um, you had one at that end and then you had the other one at the Waikiri um, Street that you just mentioned. Uh, is this on Golf Road? Yeah, sorry, Golf Road. Um, sorry, my mistake. Just give me a second, I'll just find the, the plans. Safety. Um, so through the chair, just clarifying, is that number 75 and 80? 82. <laughs> no, that, that doesn't help. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Unless you've got laser eyes. <laughs> <laughs> through the chair uh, is the council uh, yeah that one this is just right, just right here. here yeah okay because i just know that that's quite a hectic corner and it does create confusion uh through the chair the the stop that's on the inbound route to to town um we are Approximately 50 metres from the intersection, so we are a wee way along from that um, that particular corner uh, of Parkers and Golf Road. I'm just trying to visualise it. Sorry. So, so what um, to the chair? What Matt's trying to say is, it's the green. Uh, the green. Yeah. What Matt's trying to say is, we're 50 metres from that intersection further up on the um that's where the bus stop is so it's, it's quite a distance from from that intersection okay it's about that, 50 meters so which we the inbound yep but not that outbound. inbound okay which we think is um um is acceptable yes okay thank you so then my other question then comes back to the um moana ave bus stops the 
um, we're aware that we've got some remedial work happening in there from the storm event last term. Um, and that there's already some restrictions and access and stuff like that happening at currently. Um, this is supposed to go live on the 1st of August. How does that all factor in and what really is the true viability of that being realistic? Oh, so um, through the chair, that work and Moana have for that, um, uh, for the work to address with the slip, um, it will be finished in advance of the 1st of August. So, um, yeah, we, we're quite comfortable that that will be done. Yes, so it won't affect us. And then he also mentioned the location um, being closer to Moncrief, um, away from that pinch point that he described this morning. Why um, the location that's being chosen? Um, can you just explain a bit more how you arrived at that location? Sorry, through the chair. Um, when we're trying to uh, cite these uh, bus stops, uh, we, we have a couple of things in mind. We, we try to actually cite it at a distance to make it walkable for a majority in the neighbourhood. Ultimately, we would have liked to have cited these bus stops close to each of the hairpin corners because they have good access to the adjacent roads. In this example, um, on, on Moana Ave, it would be Stantel Ave. But we have taken into account that those corners have poor visibility, and so we have moved them away from them onto a straight section. So we've put uh, this location on the nearest to Stantel Ave straight section to give that, you know, that additional safety of being able to see a bus as it stopped in that location. Okay. And that's, again, going to be monitored over the 12-month review? That's correct, yes. Okay. Thank you. One more question, sorry. Got caught up in my questions. Um, the SANS, um, there was a indicator this morning that there's a resource consent that um, prevents or the accessibility of where we're talking about the bus stop and stuff like that come into question. Um, are we able to have access to any restrictions or impediments that would prevent that bus stop based on the owner or the developer of the SANS requirements under the resource consent? Um, through the chair, we will need to um, check that um, that resource consent just to, to make sure we're okay, and uh, we have that as an action item. Okay. Any further questions on Route 4? Uh, then we've just got those five items under other bylaw changes. Um, stayed the same between supplementary and this one, but do officers have any updates or items they'd like to raise in relation to that? Uh, through the chair, no changes to the um, the other bylaw changes we're proposing. And any questions on those other bylaw changes? Councillor Sampson. Um, thanks. Just following on from the um, the Jenner Road discussion, not to install stops that would retain some of the parking. Does that change what we've got under the other bylaw changes or not? Through the chair, the, the no stopping to facilitate the bus service would remain under the current proposal. If we were to remove the bus stops themselves, yes, we would need to delete the items out of the schedules, and that would just go back to default parking. So the other bylaw changes still stands as that's still correct? Is that correct, yes. Sir. So... We don't take questions from the um, from the uh, public gallery, but I will clarify, as I said earlier, this, those no stopping lines are along the banked side to enable both the bus and emergency service access through General Road. Is that correct? I'll just confirm that. Correct. Trudy, you had a question? Just um, the other bylaw changes. It talks about Main Road Stoke, but the changes of the parking time limits to P60, P10, MP2. Um, this came about through the business owner's proposal or was this something that council had considered? Um, so through the chair, we um, 
um, and, I, and I discussed that in or that, that item is discussed um, in the, the the main body of the report under parking restrictions, Stoke Business Hub, um, item 4.1.9. So we were always proposing changes to the um, the restrictions outside um, the the businesses. Um, uh, at um, at the at the public meeting, it was proposed um, what is in front of you. And um, we supported that. So they, we were always proposing restrictions. The businesses came back with the proposal, and which we supported. So okay. that's in, in the report, yes. Yeah, no, thank you for that. And so are there any increased mobility parking or anything along that space, or are they remaining the same general P60, P10, P2? Um, no additional, no. No, there's just changing to the time limits. Okay, thank you. Councillor Sampson. Um, thanks, Deputy Mayor, through the Chair. Um, I had a question about the P2. I recall a conversation from last term around trying to um, uh, maybe aggregate times. Um, maybe I think I think the minimum that we had talked about was like P5 or P10, just that P2 seemed almost... Um, redundant and I just wondered you know could we simplify it and just have p60 p10 but yeah um, look that's what uh, through the chair that's what we proposed but this was a this was a discussion with the businesses and this is what um, they proposed to us um, and uh, yeah I this, this 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 was from them which we um, we accepted do I think P2 is a short period of time? I do, but this is this was proposed from there. Because, because P2 is essentially just drop off, pick up, um, isn't it? Yeah. Okay. Sorry. No, sorry, not not allowed under our uh, standing orders. But we will be adjourning to um, work through some of these proposals. So we'll come and have a chat. Any other questions on those other proposed? Um, amendments to the bylaw schedules. Seeing none, um, so we've now run through with questions on all of those items. We've had flagged a number of changes from what is in both the original through to the supplementary and now to where we're landing today. So we're going to take an adjournment just to pull together what we've got in front of us um, and then we'll move into decision making on this item. Yeah.
All right, welcome back. Um, thank you for your patience during that adjournment. Uh, we've just been pulling together the full list um, of proposed changes now following um, the submission process, the discussion that's happened already. So I'll invite our officers to just run through that list. Um, so through the chair, if um, the GAs could just bring up that Word document and um, maybe if we could go through it route by route and just make sure that you are, are, are happy with that. So on route one, there were no changes. And I'll probably let Matt speak to this um, because it's probably easier. Uh, yeah, so no changes on route one. Uh, route two, uh, so quarantine road uh, remains in, although it's crossed out. It's, it's, um, we're planning to remove it. We're no longer, so it stays. If you have to scroll down on that one. <laughs> Perfect, thank you. Um, Nayland Road, um, moving to 119, um, that's the proposal. Nayland Road, Broad Green Intermediate. Uh, we've highlighted the green ones as um, items we will bring back to a future hearings panel um, well, after we consult a bit further and engage the feedback. 271 Nayland Road is removed and option two at 253 is the preferred. Main Road Stoke Countdown, um, so this would remain as a stop for Route 1. Uh, Nayland Road, Nayland College, um, we'll come back to a future hearings panel um, once we're consulted further. Uh, route 3. So the, the Dodson Valley, uh, Rainbow and Verneath um, are crossed out, so they no longer go in. And that should be the same in the next um, next rows. So that's the corresponding three in the other direction. Assified Drive opposite Miyazu Gardens um, is read as it's amended. So it's a, it's a tweak to the existing. Amano Street, uh, these are the two locations that we will um, work further with this community and find an alternate solution and come back to a future hearings panel. Uh, Jenna Road, uh, this proposal there shown is to remove the bus stops on Jenna Road. Same on Jenna Road, this is the other, other direction uh, they are proposed to come out. Amano Street is the same duplicates as above. Um, to be consulted on further and come back to a future hearings panel. And that last one of Vanguard Street, the proposed option one is the preferred. <coughs> so that's the changes for route three, route four. No changes in that first lot apart from 208 Brook Street, where we'll come back to a future hearing panel based on the way, um, the tweak to make there. Bisley Ave at 40 um, is to be removed. Bolt Road, um, 117, 127, 121, um, We're recommending option two for both of those. Bisley Ave behind the sands um, is to prefer installing this bus stop. So the revised um, of not installing it has been crossed out. 63 Bisley Ave, um, recommending the revised option at 45, 47. <coughs> Other bylaw changes, uh, 51 to 71 Jenna Road, um, remove that uh, currently. So it would see 26 to 56 installed, but not 51 to 71 Jenna Road. And a minor change to the P2 to make those a P5 car park. <laughs> All right, I'll now open for any questions on that broad package. Any questions? Rachel. Um, thanks, Deputy Mayor, through the Chair. Um, there are obviously some areas that um, will need to come, you know, need to be um, reviewed in the next 12 months, like Jenna Road. Is it going to work for that community to no longer have bus stops on Jenna Road? Um, the Westbrook Terrace one, you know, where it's now really close to the front of that family's house. Um, 
is there going to be a um, as part of that review process? Well, do you think it's likely that um, members of the community will have an opportunity to feed back into that review somehow, or, or is it too early to know how that would look? Um, through the chair, I think it's too early at this stage. Um, we, we're really trying to focus on the 1st of August. Um, but what we will do is, as I said, we, we've, we've given a commitment that we will um, uh, monitor the entire new bus service, a whole, a whole range of things, and we will be keeping a database of everything we receive, and then we'll be collating that. And um, as to next steps, I haven't even really thought about that. Okay. I um, that, that really appreciate that. Thanks. Trudy? Thank you, through the chair. Just to clarify, um, Jenna Road, um, the no stopping, just so it's really clear, which part of the road are we talking about and does that extend the current yellow lines um, all the way up or is that down the bottom part? I just want to get really clear. Uh, so through the chair, the even numbering, so 26 to 56, um, is along the hillside or the bank side of Jenna Road. Um, so parking would be available against the footpath. Yes, yeah, the footpath, okay. And is there currently how many parks along that part already? In terms of the revised option, I don't have that data in front of oh, me. Okay. Sorry. Yeah. sorry, thank you. Um, and then the P5, I think that's a bit more practical. Um, so that's good. And then the... Um, I just want to get really clear. So, in Route 2, Quarantine Road is back in because you originally had that cross out. So, what's the rationale on that? Uh, so, this is um, to service the late, late bus. Oh, the late, uh, so, late it could, bus. could stop there if it wanted to. Yeah, I remember there was something. I just couldn't remember what it was. Late, late bus. And then the... Hundred and nineteen was that the option that you came up with, or was that the suggestion from the submitters? Uh, so, chair, that was suggested to us from resident feedback. Okay, thank you. And right, and future hearing, future hearing. Uh, and so, the um, um, the sands. Um, sorry. <laughs> oh, so that'll be worth four. Yeah. <laughs> sorry, I'm just all over the place. Sorry. Uh, a little bit further. One more. Just there. Yep. So behind the sands, new location, because the option two had that and it was crossed out, but it's in there. Can you just re explain that again, please? So the chair, option one was to install it in the two parking bays behind the sands. Option two was to not install this bus stop at all. Okay. So you've gone back to option one. Correct. And will that, because of the resource consent that come through, that will come back at a future information sharing? We will check. Um, we will check whether there's any limitations on that resource consent, but subject to that, we, we propose okay. that it stays. Okay, that's fine. So would it be in the recommendation subject to the any um, impairment from the resource consent. Is that what you just said? Um, it could be monitored. Um, such, it's not in the current res resolution as it stands now. Okay, I would just you, like you could do that to have if you it really wanted in to. Minute, if that's yep. okay. Thank you. Any further questions on this? Seeing none, can we just bring up the resolutions? And I'm happy to move resolutions one through four. I'm assuming there's none hiding on the other page. And Councillor Sampson is happy to second that. So that is the receiving the reports, approving the um, revised Stoke interchange um, location and approving these updated bus stops and parking restrictions as we've just run through and making all of the corresponding changes to the schedule of the bylaw. And we've minuted uh, that note around the sands. Councillor Sanson? 
Is you, debate? I will shortly open for debate. I'll let officers step away from the table first and say a huge thank you to them um, in that process. All right, we are now open for debate on those four resolutions. Uh, Councillor Sampson, you have the floor. Um, thanks very much, Deputy Mayor, through the Chair. Um, so first of all, I'd just like to um, acknowledge all the community um, submissions, voice, views, um, you know, that um, and people in the gallery, gallery today and who were here and have left and came and spoke to us. So I know that it's a real commitment of time. I know that some of these things can be really stressful um, and I really appreciate that, um, you know, those of you who support the improved bus services also acknowledge that as part of this. So, yeah, I just really want to um, thank you for your um, commitment of time and, um, yeah, and, you know, yeah. Um, I'd like to acknowledge the staff who I know have been working around the clock for months and months and months on this. Um, and I know that it's, yeah, it's been um, tough getting it to the, you know, it will be tough getting to the 1st of August deadline. And yeah, so just really, Alec, to you and your team, thank you. I know it's, um, it's a massive body of work for them. And um, I know that, you know, for the most part, the community are pretty excited about the improved bus services. So thanks for that. Um, and then, yeah, I'm just really delighted that Nelson Tasman is finally going to be kind of stepping into the 21st century with a modern, um, low carbon, regular frequency, um, you know, more buses, more people, more often service. And I'm just super excited to be able to catch a bus to the airport and to be able to catch a bus out to Richmond and not have to wait for an hour to, <laughs> as I missed the first one. So yeah, just great work everybody. And I'm um, looking forward to this coming to life. Thanks, Councillor Sampson. Councillor Brand. Uh, thank you, through the Chair. Um, I'd just like to acknowledge that a lot of work has been put in by the Council and also by the public. And I really appreciate the fact that number two is up there. Um, it really shows that the Council has heard, listened and reviewed um, the plan based on a community coming together and wanting to co-create a good design going forward for the future sustainability of the public transport, but also for the communities in which they live. And I also want to acknowledge that there have been some um, really amazing submissions from different members of the public that highlighted different things that we wouldn't know about um, if the public didn't submit. So while um, it has been acknowledged and apologised in the initial part of um, how the community was consulted and engaged and the council have owned that, um, and hopefully that, that will change in the processes going forward. But I do think we've landed at a good place and the fact that this will be reviewed um, and monitored over the next 12 months to ascertain the viability and the sustainability of the locations and the routes that have been chosen, but also provide the opportunity for expansion in the future um, for more opportunities of public transport routes and um, engagement with our community going forward. So, um, yeah, it was tough. It was a challenge. People have been heard, and I thank them for taking time out of their busy um, lives to submit so that Council can actually work with the community to come up with a positive solution. So thank you. Thank you, Councillor Brand, and I'll exercise my right of reply. Um, I was bloody nervous for this meeting, um, not because of the feedback or or because of the process, but because this has been, for me and for many of the staff, a 
the culmination or, or getting towards the culmination of 36 months worth of work from the when a, a new bus system was merely a glimmer in a few of our eyes um, of the hope of actually we could deliver expanded public transport services to this region and it's it's always the thing where you're the high level your great idea is the easy part um, and it's implementation where we get into those more challenging conversations especially when it becomes personal to people's place their sense of community where they stand um, in our city and what it could mean for them uh, and so I really want to acknowledge the engagement that our community has had and the passion that they've shown, not just for wanting to make the system work, but for wanting to make sure it works for their community and their place as well. And I'm glad that we've been able to incorporate a lot of that feedback and help shape and develop this as part of that community and something that will serve our wider community. Whilst also acknowledging that as with anything, I'm sure there'll be a few things that are probably not perfect um, and we could uh, turn this into a 12-hour meeting and at the end of it things probably still wouldn't quite be perfect and that's why I think that review is crucial and for our community to continue to feedback what they're seeing on the ground is crucial to making sure that this is a system that works. There's also been some interesting um, conceptions and, and perceptions of what bus services mean for our community. Uh, and while the majority of submissions have been very focused on the practicalities and the realities of what it means, there's also been discussions around uh, increased loitering of, of people coming into your community to hang around at bus stops. And it's, it's something I struggle with because when we talk in those terms, we're talking about those same members that live in our community, that, that live down the road from us, when this is a service to get people from where they are to where they want to go. Um, and more often than not, that is about taking people between their house and their friend's home to work, to where they socialise, to where they contribute to this community. And so I... I don't think that all of those fears are founded um, and I hope that this system can prove them wrong. Uh, I have a long list of staff that I want to acknowledge um, by name because this has been a huge contribution and particularly over the past couple of months, this has been a very intensive exercise for a team that hasn't been fully resourced and they've gone above and beyond to respond and to engage with our community and at times it hasn't been perfect but um, it, it's a rare occasion that we find a perfect person so Alec I want to say a huge thank you to you to Marg to Matt to Drew to Sue to Paul to Jane McLeod to Madeline to Rebecca to Sam from Stantec um, and everyone behind the scenes as well who have helped bring this to fruition um, it's been a, a big project and this is just one part, but this is a crucial part in terms of implementation and it's one that I hope we can keep the conversations that have started with our community going to make sure that this can work well into the future and that we can learn from one another to shape this into being something truly effective. Uh, and with that, I will put the resolutions. All those in favour, please say aye. Aye. Any opposed? That motion is carried. Which brings us to the end of this agenda and the end of the longest hearings panel we've had so far this term. Um, and I will close with karakia. Tuia ke runga, tuia ke raro, tuia ke roto, tuia ke waho. Tuia te here tangata, karongo te po, karongo te ao, haumie, huie, tai kie. Enjoy your afternoons, everyone.